Right, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our second virtual sharing circle um, with Indigenous knowledge holders. Um, this is brought to you by the NWT Rex and Parks Association and the Mackenzie Recreation Association. So we have Rachel Cluteray from NWT RPA and Jessica Van Overbeek from MRA. They will be moderating this. And if you guys have any questions, please just put it in the chat box and uh, we'll answer it at the end. Um, also, a reminder that um, there is a chat box there. So if you guys want to put your questions there, just type it in and we'll get it all. And and this whole thing is being recorded. So if yeah, you're unable to attend it, please just um, check out the RPA YouTube page and the SoundCloud. So it'll have their the whole audio there and everything. So I'm just going to start off by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Carson Roach. I'm from Delaney. Um, I'm currently the events manager for the Aboriginal Sports Circle. And I've been here for just over two years. And um, now I'm living in Yellowknife and uh, everything's going awesome here. So I'm loving the job. I get to travel all through the north. Um, it's kind of sad with COVID that I can't do uh, my job and travel the north, but um, get to stay in Yellowknife. And uh, I just recently attended uh, the Chinta program and I, I got to learn a lot with um, one of our hosts there, Charlie. And uh, Noel was there too as one of the, the workers. So that was really fun and you got to be on the land and get to learn. So that's kind of our topic today is um, on the land and we're gonna focus on ice safety. Um, but before we get started, um, I'm just going to ask if Charlie, um, if Charlie can do a, an opening prayer before we get started. Yeah, uh, thank you, Carson. I'd like to do that little prayer for, for everybody who is listening to us and we travel at this time of year. The ice, you know, always be something like, like can't I mean, like an accident all the time, and people don't know about ice safety, if not. So. Can you do an open prayer for everybody? Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of our Father, the Lord, and heaven, heaven, and come. That will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. See, we can also pass fast, give us at least not temptation, but they love us. Amen. Thank you. Can we start now? That's it. Oh, I see Charlie. Yeah, it's this time of year, uh, uh, ice, uh, you know, it's a uh, watch it. Uh, uh, it's uh, the internet's a little uh, low there, it's cutting in and out. I think you're good now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on. Thank you, Charlie, for that prayer. Um, so Charlie mentioned that we're going to focus on ice, ice safety, and um, and how to to broaden our um, our knowledge on on this topic. And so we got our three knowledge holders here. So get water. Is that Charlie? And this uh, time year and plus. Like, well, how thick uh, you check the ice for the axe, you, how, how thick the, the ice is, maybe safety, safe the ice is around travelers on a, about six inches of ice. Six, uh, yeah, six, more than six is good to travel. But some people don't know where, where they're going and they don't check the ice, like, you know, they don't know their area, even that. They, you, that's when some, some schedules uh, they felt in, they don't know the lake and the currents and on, on the lake, on the land. Even, uh, Inside the uh, inland, some lakes are bigger. The, the wind, the wind blows the uh, blows the ice back and forth. So under under the ice, the water moves too. So this time of year, you gotta watch that land. Yeah. Every you're not not uh, familiar with that land, should check it with some uh, some other people on where you know, um, like yeah, with um you know the water um, rising. That, that kind um, of difficult too mm, with certain areas. Or 
or deal on the ask question about people, elders or that. And uh, yeah, you just good to have a, a okay. second here. So Carson, sorry, we'll just be right back. Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so before we get into our our, our topics, um, we're just going to introduce our knowledge holders. So we're going to start off with uh, with Noel. So Noel, Noel, you go ahead. Thank you, Carson. Uh, my name is Noel Cockney. Uh, I grew up both in Kaktiatek and in Nuvik Northwest Territories. And uh, I'm recently uh, working for Dechinta uh, mm -hmm. as their safety coordinator and uh, a regional programmer. So developing a lot of the programs that Dechinta has been doing for 10 years, but for up here uh, in the Takanuvik Aklavik uh, region here, so that we're able to develop a lot of traditional teaching and and just passing on the knowledge of uh, the any of the other than the Gwich'in people that are up here to our participants. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, let's move to you, Matea. Uh, hi, I'm Matea Gillis. I'm from Anuvik. Um, I am in grade 12. Uh, I also am the editor in chief for Nipaturk magazine, which is the Inivial youth magazine. And I work for Northern Youth Leadership, which is run out of Yellowknife. Um, and that's it for me. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, Charlie, you're last to introduce yourself, and then we'll get started. Okay, well, my name is uh, Charlie Sangri. I'm from uh, Dera and live all my life in Yellowknife and travel most of the territory in for Austria and U.S. for firefighting. And, okay. Perfect. All right, thanks for the introductions, guys. Um, we'll get started, uh, we'll move on to our questions and it's gonna be in random order. I'm just gonna go off of off of whoever. So we'll start with the first one. Um, so we're gonna think of a very happy, fond time that we had on the ice. So you can think back to a time where um, Something you know, being on the ice made you really happy, and it brought some good memories. Um, so we'll start off with you, Charlie. So if you got a a nice, uh, happy memory you want to share with us on the ice. Okay. Well, when I was younger, I used to stay with it, my auntie out in uh, Wood Bay, and usually we we check the ice because we stayed on the island, and from there we got travel dog team to where to where uh, Dada. It used to be, uh, you can't wait for Halloween. You need to check the ice all the way just to go town by a dog team. You, go, you know, go town by a dog team for Halloween for candies. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, when I was about 10 or nine years old, I used to go town with, it, with my auntie. Yeah? And my auntie told me, check the ice, you know, all the time, every, almost every day. And I check for weather too, make sure I pray for cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we now we we go town and you know as soon as the ice is frozen we go from from inside uh, inland from across Wood Bay and all we travel by on the ground and even uh, around that uh, Keicho Keicho Bay there some yeah. the lakes not even frozen we go on the land all the way that we, we make it to a dead end from that we just catch right with town just for Halloween just <laughs> and this because we back in. In 60, 60 on there, and like you know, before uh, Halloween, you just come here by dog team. My uncle at the gym, they, they go skating by, but you know, everyone just play, you know, go skating out hockey, hockey. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're using a dog team to go trick or treating when you're 10. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's coming before October 31st. Oh, coming, yeah, that's really back. In, 69, 68 on there. Yeah, we just come to town with everything. Just ice was. That's so amazing. Was just, yeah. Times have changed, eh? No one's, no kids are doing that these days. Well, well that with dog team, you could travel the ice about three, three inches. So, you know, the ice is, you know, thick enough. Eh? Yeah, and yeah. My, my auntie said you travel twice. That's be good enough. He says, one, <laughs> one drop and the ice is not safe. 
So you travel twice and safe to travel, eh? Oh. So yeah. That's good. Uh, That's the yeah. traditional way of checking, eh? Yeah, yeah. You trip uh, you you trap ice hard as you can in one trap, doesn't mean it's not safer. You trap it twice and doesn't mean same place. Eh? So it does about over but over three inches. So that's when we travel on the ice lab. So. That's awesome. Cool to know. All right, let's move on to Mateo. We'll, uh, same question as Charlie. Think of a time on, oh, you're muted. Think of a time on the ice that made you happy. Uh, maybe you're with your friends or anything. Um. So when I think of a really like good memory when I was on ice, it was when I was in Greenland, and we were, I was with students on ice and we had an extra day in one of the communities, I can't pronounce the name, but uh, we got to see, we got to go on ice cap and it was just so amazing and beautiful out there. And we all just had a great, like great day. And that was a great way to end our day. And I remember like we got to try the water coming from the ice, which was really good. Um, very earthy, but it was good. <laughs> I think that's my happiest memory on ice. Yeah, Greenland's a beautiful place. I've never been, but I've always seen pictures and my brother's been and yeah, it looks awesome. Mm, All right, uh, Noel, you're up. Sure you uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think my favorite moment on ice was uh, when uncle and I and another local person went out polar bear hunting I was probably maybe around 15 or 16 years old and um, we were going out uh, right along the uh, shore of the Arctic Ocean and then uh, eventually going actually going out to, towards the middle of the Arctic Ocean and we had to be traveling at least an hour and a half almost two hours or so uh, like directly uh, to the middle of the Arctic Ocean to, um, where the water is open because uh, that's where they they uh, mostly hunt the seals and stuff like that. So uh, getting to where uh, they're hunting all that. And then along the way, we saw uh, a mother and two cubs. We didn't no. get them just because we want the cubs to, to grow up. But uh, after just seeing them, we started following them slowly for a little bit uh, just following their tracks and stuff like that and as we were getting a little bit closer they started to speed up and of course uh, my uncle and I we wanted to see how close we could get uh, and like we chased them for a little bit um, it wasn't too long because I mean they they even the cubs run uh, really fast and as soon as we got too close they started to go towards open ocean open water and it was only uh, maybe 30 feet of open water and once the mother and two cubs got to the other side they the mother basically looked looked behind at us and shook off the water and almost like stared us down telling us to to try try follow her but uh yeah i think that was definitely uh my favorite moment uh being on being on the ice for sure was that uh one of your first times when hunting for polar bear that is my only time, yeah. Uh, I want, definitely want to get out again, but um, we'll see see if it does happen. But yeah, I mean, just like my uncle always calls me his uh, his lucky hunter, just because we actually see something uh, when when he takes me out, which is I think pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right, um, I'm gonna switch it up, kind of go the opposite. So let's instead of the happiest fondest time let's think of something like your scariest time on the ice something that um i don't know where you realize you're like oh i gotta be more safe or something i don't know dangerous almost happened or like for me i know it's bad like as kids you know we we'd always jump on the ice to play and you know some kids would uh, fall through but nothing crazy happened but you realize you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this and listen to my parents. So <laughs> uh, let's start with you, Matea, if you have any. 
Um, yeah, so when I was younger, we were skidooing out on the lake in front of my house and we found a hole in the ice and one of the kids that I was with decided to go up to it and step around it and ended up falling through and we were able to get him out and like he was fine but I, that's when I realized I was like wow like my dad was right I have to be more careful <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that was a scary moment for me and kind of made me realize like this is like a real topic to talk about and you have to actually understand the ice if you want to be safe on it yeah yeah exactly all right Charlie you got a story uh like you know, this time of year, you know, you fall the skidoo trail, but sometimes some people take shortcut. Eh? That's when it happened to me one time when I was, you know, following a, a skidoo trail, and then I thought, well, uh, I thought the ice is safe enough, eh? but I so I took a shortcut, and then I, uh, my my skidoo fell in the water. Eh? The whole ice collapsed with me. Oh, and I was, really? yeah. Was, of course, you know, I wasn't far away from. Uh, well, like, it was this time of year like this. Good thing I had a, a friend of mine following me. No, my brother was following me, and they, he stopped behind me, and um, I I jumped out, and but my skiddy was in the water. Eh? So right away, one side my foot got wet, and then, and I got out in the ice, and I, I ran back and I stopped him, eh? and then he, I took shortcuts. This time of year is it's not to it's not, uh, not to take shortcut. Eh? Yeah, yeah, this time. I I I saw hard, but I took shortcut and I ended up in the water and about I took my skiddy over, but I took you know. And I just Should have went the long way. <laughs> yeah, no, I was following that. I was following the same skiddy trail, but just just a little small bay, and I sit and this you know, and then I went straight across, and this one I saw the ice was hard, but I just I fell in. So when was I, this? I was about what we when I was trapping I was. 1980 on 81, 82 on there. Yeah. Well, the ice. Uh, well, we used to use talking, but when, but now we're using skinny was whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> Taking going home is like this. I was going home, so I just took a took a shortcut at this one. Yeah. And some more. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did your skidoo get pulled out and was it fixed or was it broken? And uh, no, it's, uh, I took it out and it's all, it's, I got started out there from there, but uh, it wasn't long in the ice, so it wasn't long inside the water enough. Oh, that's but good. I, I cleaned all the spark plug air from there and cooperated and it took me about an hour to start it up again. Well, that's good. You, you didn't lose it. Um, no, but the, uh, my seat got all soaking wet, just frozen. <laughs> <laughs> all <winter. laughs> Frozen seed. <laughs> all winter? <laughs> yeah. Frozen so, that. So. All right, Noel, you got a story? Uh, I mean, like, the for up here, uh, especially growing up, uh, it was always, well, my family and I always, like, traveled, like, stayed out at our camps uh, all, basically all spring, and towards the end of the springtime is always, the most dangerous time just because of of course the ice is melting and just getting thinner and thinner and um like the biggest parts of like while traveling in the springtime is uh like having to like not just on the ocean but even on the mckenzie river just like you have to skip some water to get to the thick ice uh where you can travel and um it didn't happen to myself my family but uh there are several family family members, uh, well, well, uh, friends of uh, family to, that have fallen through in the springtime, which is always really hard. And uh, it's like with traveling with so many layers, it just like gets waterlogged and uh, mm -hmm. just pulls them under. And just having so many those those things happen so many times it's just especially when i was really young just my grandparents actually telling me stories of just like making sure that um it's safe enough to travel home and mm -hmm. particularly when you're getting close to the shore yeah uh, in the exactly. late spring just because yeah that's exactly and uh but yeah those are always the the scary moments of like especially like not just when my family's traveling but just hearing about other people traveling and just like trying to make sure that 
we're all we're all being safe and uh, noticing all these little things that happen when the ice is melting and uh, especially in the springtime really knowing like the different colors of the ice to know which is solid and which is uh, breaking up into like the candle ice and stuff like that it's just like yeah so like, my grandparents and my mom have always taught me all those things just because of everything that happened with other with friends and stuff like that so I guess that kind of I'll stick with you know it kind of leads to our second question okay uh, why why is ice safety important to you and your community um, you, you mentioned your grandparents but is there anything else you'd like to add uh, I mean the biggest thing is just really I mean like especially up here on the Arctic Ocean it's a huge part of our life of actually traveling on the ice whether that be going out fishing uh, like ice fishing, jiggling or setting nets under the ice or uh, going you know, hunting caribou and uh, stuff like that. It just like makes it a lot easier uh, for us to travel than it would be in the summertime just because everything is frozen and we can travel anywhere. And uh, whereas like in the summertime up here, like it's basically, basically a huge bog up here on the tundra. So lots of water. So it's really hard to get to lots of places. But uh, yeah, hunters uh, love the winter. Yeah, yeah so like the biggest thing is, oh yeah, it just makes it a lot easier for us. That's for sure. Nice. I right, move on to you, Matea. Um, why is ice safety important to you and your community? Um, it's it's important to me because my family, um, we go to our cabin quite a bit and. Um, mostly during the winter and I, I want them to be safe. I don't want anything to happen to them and same with my community. I, we have a lot of people who go to that, like their cabins or go get wood or um, uh, just go out on the land a lot and then, like to ensure their safety is nice to have these, like have these resources for people to learn about the ice and um, like learn about like the do's and don'ts of traveling on the ice. Uh, it's just another like safety net there for them to ensure they don't get hurt. Yeah, exactly. All right, Charlie, why is the ice safety important to you and your community? Well, this time of year, I said, you know, I hear people that as soon as the ice freeze the air, they want to go out, you know, to the cabin and some of the, they, they let go to get some wood, you know, firewood and some of the let you go out picnic. And that's why out, out here there's, well, plus that, uh, we are living on a great safe lake too, so it doesn't freeze fast out here. So some of them no, they, they let you take the, you know, they let you go on the land, but they, so this, these guys have got to check the ice air before they leave, you know. Once, once everybody knows the ice is safe, everybody start going out. Like, in, like last, last couple of days ago, people are going out to uh, Old Bay Airflat like and just, to, just for out there, you know, for cut the wood and, you know, have cook out if not, just cause this time of year, it's, it's not not too cold if not, so I able like to go out there. So lots of skidoo trails already out in that area. That is ice, so uh, just before, a long time ago, people, you know, uh, they don't check the ice, so two young boys died in data before, and it's cause in this time of year, everybody's just going up by, by skidoo, they're not being careful of checking the ice in that. They went town and they they broke through the ice and the ice like glass when you break the ice the glass breaks and breaks the shatter into big pieces that's why it goes uh, this time of year it goes like the uh, ice out of here so when it breaks like this breaks into big a big chunk of ice it's not safe springtime is this. well springtime is different ice uh, there you know you breaks in but you it's like candles it sticks together. Uh, like a like a rolling you roll because uh this time of year too you fell in and you always carry a knife with you knife with you that would just when you fell in you fell in the water you, you need the ice like a pick just to pull yourself out of mm. this time of year it's hard to get out of that when, when you go fall through the ice mm. so you need a, a I me mean, i always carry a knife this time of year just when i fell in the water i was pull, pulled myself out of mm. 
You mentioned two candle, two candlesticks. What, what were you talking about there? Well, those candles at this time, springtime, when you know, those ice start melting, like you know, all the water goes through overflow, it goes all the way down. Like it's like a candle, like like little, like a, like a little string, like mm -hmm. candle, you know, water going right through, like all mm -hmm. those. Those are safe uh, to travel because it's, it's like you know, like a sponge, you know. Oh. Yeah, you walk around, this floats it, but oh. but. Once you get on, you can roll, roll yourself out. Oh. Yeah. So, but this, this time, this kind of ice here is hard to do it because it's hard to get out yeah, it breaks, it breaks like a glass. Just, yeah. and just doesn't stay you know, oh. Like spring time, spring time is different. Spring time is more, more safe than this time of year. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we'll move on. Uh, next question. Um, we'll stick with you, Charlie. And then uh, Noel touched on this about how. Uh, he reads the ice and certain he knows certain colors in the ice in certain areas. Um, kind of staying on that subject, like what what do you, how do you prepare yourself before you go onto the ice, and like do do you know all that know how to read the ice and what do you do to to see what where where parts are bad or where parts are good to go? Well, uh, uh, you could tell the ice is frozen overnight. It's just that uh, ice is just all like a crystal, crystal, you know, like a little shirt hair, <laughs> like, a, like a brush cut, yeah, all the little, the little things sticking out, you know, like, yeah, that's, you could tell the fresh, you know, or else you, 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 you chop it uh, with your, with your axe, you could check that too, or sometime like a, in the bay, it, it freezes fast, and then, then you could see where's all the ice uh, broken, and that's a new, where's a new fresh ice, could tell that, that up top of this hard no snow on top you could see the fresh uh, fresh ice set so yeah. you go wash that but some out here you could see it and like you know we're there to say all the ice broken that's rough ice that's was hard and the next one is uh, nice and smooth that's a fresh ice this mm. frozen mm. overnight and plus there's hardly no snow on on it nothing that's yeah tell the fresh ice you got to wash out those okay. ones yeah that's mm -hmm. dangerous one Thank I'll you. Say, uh, in deep water, it doesn't freeze fast. Ice doesn't freeze fast. Uh, so this one, big lake here, it doesn't freeze fast. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's dif different with the big lake here. Um, and then a little different in uh, Matea and Knowles region, where uh, they got the ocean there and then the, the crazy Mackenzie River. Um, <laughs> we'll move to you. Uh, Matea, so how do you, um, what do you do to prepare yourself when you, you're about to go on the ice? Um, so I'm still kind of like learning about ice safety. Um, so I, I like listen to my, what my dad says, or I use Facebook because a lot of people like post on Facebook, oh, this patch is, or this area is not good. Um, but um, so yeah, I'm still in the learning process. So I listen to people's stories or um, when elders talk about it, I like to hear the stories and I'm like, oh, so this means this. And, um, but I, I just, I ask questions. That's how I kind of prepare. I ask them like, oh, is this area safe? Like, should I be driving in here? Um, yeah. And I find that's the best way for me to learn. <laughs> yeah, ask as many questions as you can. Um, how about you, Noel? How, how do you prepare yourself before going on the ice? Yeah, it, it really uh, definitely look at the the shoulder seasons of the winter. Like here in the fall time uh, is always like really kind of like what Charlie was saying, especially on freshwater, uh, like the lakes and stuff like that. The, the ice, like he says, really breaks like glass. It's just really easy to to fall through when you're if you don't know how thick it is and it's like in the springtime we always have um, an axe or a chisel uh, to actually check the ice so that we're before we go out on any any piece of ice whether it be fresh water or salt water is actually really uh, trying to chop through to see how thick it actually is and um, yeah depending on what you're driving on on there with whether it be a snowmobile or a vehicle uh, it just like making sure that you know the thicknesses uh, that would support those vehicles and stuff like that. 
And then, um, yeah, like when you're, especially in the fall time as well, is when you're traveling on the ice, um, like if there's like snow accumulated on the ice that uh, the snow uh, insulates the ice from uh, getting thicker and thicker. So like trying to stay on just the clear ice so that you're not uh, potentially going on any thinner ice that would possibly be under the snow just because, yeah, like I said, the snow insulates it. Um, from yep. the cold uh, weather uh, that is on the outside there. So just the more exposed ice is just a lot safer, particularly in the fall time. And uh, like when you're coming towards the springtime, kind of like what I mentioned a little bit earlier, just like actually seeing the different colors of ice, like the really nice bright blue, uh, lighter blue kind of color just really shows like it's really thick for you to travel on and then nice. like the darker color it just like water starting to seep into uh, kind of like what Charlie was getting into that candle ice which is uh, obviously just less supportive than the the actual clear thick ice and uh, yeah and also like uh, when you're traveling on those seasons uh, in the fall time uh, like the less water, the more, the thicker the, the ice would be just because it doesn't have to, uh, there's not as much water in that area to continue to like melt that out. So like being along the shores is always safer just because it's a lot thicker. And then uh, kind of like what I was saying in the springtime is uh, just actually going like almost skipping that water, like I mentioned in the uh, in the going to the towards that thicker thicker ice is definitely uh, a lot safer when you're of course like you're skipping water it can a little it can be quite scary but uh, uh, as long as you keep pushing through towards that uh, thicker ice uh, you'll be a lot safer than trying to travel along the shore there. And yeah, so just really understanding uh, those seasons and what's happening through the seasons as well. That's awesome. It sounds like you know, you know a lot about uh, the ice and the way it's supposed to look. And just what another question uh, about that is like, who who taught you all the the ways to read the ice? Uh, a lot of it, just like actually being out uh, camping with both my grandparents and my mom, and like we were always there during uh, the falls, winters, and springs, just because that's when we we're able to really get out hunting and fishing. So like, whenever we were traveling, even from a really young age, they always ingrained me in me uh, all that knowledge of just noticing the different colors of ice in the springtime and just like how and also like not just knowing um the color of the ice but also like knowing like where more like high flow creeks are or rivers are just so that because that would mean uh the ice is a lot thinner usually just because there's always constantly moving ice moving water underneath the ice so just really uh, understanding like your area of that you're traveling in and um, whether that be in the winter or uh, summertime it's just like you can notice just different creeks that flow a little bit harder than others and um, yeah so just really getting a full understanding of like your your whole surroundings is like what my grandparents and my mom had really really taught me my whole life and when they when they say that over and over again, it just sticks in you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you hear it every day. You're like, I know, I know, but yep. <laughs> you really want to engrave that. Um yeah, it's good preparation, you know. And another thing is to you let people know where you're going before you head out. Exactly. And then, you know, some people like to have the like a satellite radio just in case mm -hmm. you get stuck or an N reach or something like that. So you're just trying to be as safe as possible when you're out on the land. Um, exactly. Yeah. So Matea, I got a question for you. This one's 
um, kind of going back to ancestors and maybe I'll relate it back to your your magazine so I understand you you interview a lot of maybe traditional elders and then maybe some um, more modern hunters of today uh, if you have um, maybe can you explain or tell us uh, maybe the difference you you hear in stories from when you talk to elders and then talk to um, to the youth now, maybe if do you see a difference in in how they they are on the ice? Um, there's like a there's some differences, but a lot of the time the youth are learning from our elders. Like we're all learning from our elders, um. So we tend to take the traits that they like pa or they they pass down to us. Um. So I see like the probably the most differences are like they're they uh dogs and everyone else skidoos. Um. <laughs> But I think those are the biggest differences. But um, you like when you talk about going out on the land, you they talk about climate change and like the differences they see with the ice and they see it melting earlier or um, freezing faster. And the elders could relate to that too. Like they notice that from growing up to like today, um, how the the land changes so much. But so I think that's like the most I see is being connected and disconnected. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Um, all right, Charlie, we'll move on to you. Um, yeah. Just before I ask you the, the questions, I'm going to ask all the all the participants uh, for everyone listening if you can write in the chat box on how your ancestors stayed safe on the ice. Uh, that'd be awesome to see. All right, Charlie. So, um, how did your ancestors stay safe on the land on the ice? Sorry. Well, I learned from my from my dad and from my uncles, my other uncles. You know, they they tell me when when the when the ice like we're we're teenagers and we you know we wanted to go on land, but they tell us when what what you know if the ice is safe. They say they, they wait for the ice freeze in front of the dead and right in front of the dead, right right to Horseshoe Ho Island on there mm. to right right across to a meat farm. So far, it's frozen. Then we know this from inside land it's frozen. Good to travel and they tell us when to travel and you guys check the ice if you told us check the ice before you guys go out because usually we, we set the net at for a basin lake and this one we everybody used to leave back the time when you dog came and we set net for dogs for fish like duck lake and uh mason lake everybody used to set the net and so they tell us when the ice is that's where we learn from from uh from our parents uh, and my uncle they tell us, you know, it's frozen, then we you could travel all the way to Wo Bay in from inside and that's when that that place is uh, frozen it's ready yet. So it's not in open, so it is it's it's freeze fast. It's, it's inside your land inside land, so all the items everything it freeze faster. So but yeah. from from data is open all the time. So so we wait till you know the middle of November everything and this when everything is pro Frozen. This when we start to go inside, start traveling by. Right now we travel by ski Yeah, yeah. We used to travel that in first week of November on there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Charlie, yeah, so stayed, with yeah, um. Oh, go ahead. No, you yeah, go ahead. I, I, I used to stay uh, out in Gordon Lake with my uncle. I stayed there for two years. Yeah, my uncle they showed me they, they talk about ice when it's when it's the traveler they told us uh, you know it's overnight you could see all the the ice is different now. Uh? Uh, yeah Gordon Lake is a big lake to it, but there's lots of currents. They taught us where, where to travel, where not to go in that time of year. So we stay we stay away from that that place. Where where we could travel and they told us where to go and every night what time I knew stay with them when you seen dog team. Eh? Yeah. Well, so half half Gordon Lake is frozen, so we went up to Berlin's that's he says ice should be frozen and everything be good to travel out there. He says that's where you need to go go out there hunting and trapping and everything. Mm -hmm. That's this awesome. Time here, go out there. All right, Charlie, I got one more question for you. Um right now you see um you know how the water is rising and then it's kind of fluctuating with the climate change and you know the land is changing, right? Um how does from when you first, as a youth, 
maybe you heard stories to now like what's the difference in the way you the way you do uh traditional activities on the land like i'm sure when you're a kid you can't be doing that things today just because the way the land's changing uh, what's the biggest difference there well the you just gotta watch out for the land it wouldn't mean that but on a traveling is that water the rise and low and you gotta watch out for the currents so that's that's when your parents say like my dad and my uncle they told us we're not to go when there's a current in it that's not safe so so like every year it changed too so you so usually we we check that that place where we're going and we, we it's not safe so we just make a we cut a, a trailer even the there's some port ash, there's even a dog team trail. So we're still using that same trail like our parents, they, they built that for us mm. here before us. So we we follow the same route like they did. So that's that's the only way for us to save, you know, safe for us to travel. Mm. So there's yeah. lots of uh, uh, trail going to to uh, Wo Bay Lad or to Tribune Bay. There's a trail, there's dog team trails in every port ash is that. If the legs not frozen, we go, we follow the we follow the, the trail that my parents like our, our ancestors they, they made a trail for us. We we keep following the same trail. We so every year we that's how we stay safe from going through the icing head. That's how we travel. And all this, like, well, not only me, but there's other there's other guys from data too. They they learn and tell me this is a trail you guys use that and just for safe be on the safe side. Eh? Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you, Charlie. Uh, all right, Noel, uh, we've got the similar question. So how, do, how did your ancestors tra traditionally stay safe on the water or on the ice? And how has ice safety changed? Uh, I mean, traditionally, uh, well, with my great-grandparents' generation, uh, they uh, travel a lot with the, the big schooners, the big boats uh, along the ocean here. So uh, uh, they were able to travel sometimes through the ice, depending on how thick it is. But like once um, they, those boats weren't able to move and even like with their uh, traditional crafts of the umiak and the kayak, uh, just like being able to knowing um how thick the ice can be to travel travel through with those uh but also like uh really uh waiting it out uh was the biggest thing for my sisters up here along the coast just because um like they're not there we don't have any live trees that are growing up here uh really so we don't have any uh means of firewood except for the driftwood that uh, is along the coast and yeah. uh but like with the kind of like what i was saying just like waiting things out to make sure that's thick enough uh for them to travel with their dog sled teams just because yeah if they did fall fall through the ice it would just be uh can be quite devastating just because like growing up along the arctic ocean you don't really swim too too much in the in the ocean uh so you don't really learn how to how to swim very, uh, in there. very good and uh yeah so like that was um i mean like just reading stories and stuff like that and just like with uh people having to try like stay uh for the rest of the fall time until the ice is thick enough that they're able to travel with their dog sled teams and um yeah and how it's changing now it just like kind of like uh matea already uh touched on it just with the climate change with everything that's happening just our winters are a lot shorter just because i mean our climate is warming up a lot more or the ice is uh over like the past five ten years or so has been freezing over later than uh, what it usually did and then springtime just melting a lot quicker just because of that warming of the, the atmosphere but uh yeah, yeah it it's just like, uh, like the old traditional hunting grounds you can't go there anymore just because it might be underwater this time mm -hmm. around so exactly so yeah like just being able to really 
uh, not just for traveling, but like what you said, just like uh, having to be a lot more cautious uh, when you're traveling to certain areas just because yeah. of like, you just don't really know how, how thick the ice can be if it's been a, a warmer winter. Exactly. All right. Um, well, thank you all for ask, uh, answering those questions. We've gone just over our time limit here. Um, we're supposed to do this for 30 minutes. I think we have, we've already gone over, but uh, things time goes by fast when you're having a good chat. Um, so we'll do one more question. And then we'll get to our um, our uh, questions by the the participants. So I got one more question for you guys, and then we'll turn it to the participant or to the to the viewers. So I guess how um, how can what's the best way to communicate ice safety to our communities? What would you what would your be your best advice and and yeah, how would you share that to our communities? So we'll start with you, Matea. Okay. Um, so for me, it's it's like going through the school for like the youth asking like the youth point of view. Um, like having these programs that take you on the land and having elders there tell you like, oh, this is like this is what you have to be doing on the ice. This is how you check if it's safe and um, having those practices passed down like orally, I think. Um, but doing it through the school and having those kind of programs, I found that I did a lot of them when I was younger, and they really benefited me. And um, they were always a lot of fun too. <laughs> awesome. All right, Charlie. Oh, one second, you're muted. Okay, uh, out here they got a three radio stations. You could uh, announce it on radio, you know, ice is safe. Like, you know, I mean, people, you know, tell them where the ice is safe and where not to go, if not, even go to a, like a, go to a school, if not, talk that ice is safe, go, you know, talk people that everything. So that would, that would people would go out, you know, make sure the ice, out here, yeah, just, we got three radios. So it just be good to announce it on radio, if not. Eh? Mm. Yeah, all the people you know, translate translate into all three you know, three different language. So it'd be good out here to tell the on the radio. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think there's a website too where the guys they measure the ice thickness around Yellowknife and Detta. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, do, yeah, they do out here on the city, you know, city what do you call it web, website. They got all that, you know, fire department they do that. That's good. But people Is that I went for a, a walk on the ice and and then I realized after I walked on the ice, I checked the website, it was only like under three inches. So mm -hmm. in this in that area I was walking. So um there's a bad example of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out here uh, beside in front of a pump house and beside uh con here, con uh, the currents yeah. come from a young river, so that's the uh, yeah, watch that. that. That part is, you know, they should have markers if not that one the ice does not, uh, not thin, not, me, not too thick to travel in that, that place. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, having markers in certain areas where people don't know would be a good idea too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, Noel, last one. Yeah, I agree with uh, what both Matea and Charlie were saying. It's just like <clears throat> uh, doing all those things as well as, uh, really and like in addition to all that just like actually encouraging a lot of the uh, young people to go out with their family whether it be their parents or grandparents just to for them to uh, learn from them just so that that knowledge is being passed on it doesn't even have to be your family it can just be like a family friend when you're going out hunting or something like that it's just like really having uh that like kind of like what when I was growing up, like we there were uh, certain families that we always went out with, and we all learned from each other. So like actually continuing to do that would be really good for uh, the next generations to to continue to do. Just because like yeah, there are some things that some families do, some where some places some families go that uh, they can teach you something a little bit different than uh, 
what your family is teaching you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you all for answering the, those questions. Um, ice safety is very important. I know to me, it's, it's very important growing up. My best memories were always on the ice. Every Easter, we'd go to a, our camp and we'd set up a, our teepee right outside the, right on the shore. And the ice took part in everything. Like we boiled, we cut ice and put it in a pot and that was our water. We made fish nets, that was our food. And we needed that to travel back to Delaney. So, you know, and it's very important to, to know the safety. And, and I think, thank all of you guys for telling us your, your stories and uh, sharing your knowledge. Um, so uh, with, with that, we can move on to our questions. Um, do we have any? Just talking to Rachel, Jess. All right, I got a question here and um, anyone can answer it. So if you wanna answer it, just go ahead, put your hand up. Uh, so what do you think are best practices for staying safe on the ice? Not all at once. I think best practices, uh, kind of like what uh, all three of us has been saying, and just like actually uh, really well, what Mateo is really saying, just always asking those questions of those people around you, just because, especially like with our um, adults and uh, elders around us, because uh, they've been tra just traveling a lot longer than we have. So like actually being able to um, continue to have those conversations with people, as well as uh, just actually listening to that advice, because again, like they've been doing this for a lot longer than we have. And um, also like just like really going through, like having those safety things, kind of like what Charlie was saying, and just like having some sort of knife or an ice pick to, if you do go through to help you get out and, uh, just having those tools to actually check the ice like an ax and stuff like that and um yeah and also like depending on where you are like continually to check that ice just because like throughout the winter it can be warmer some sometimes and which would make the ice a little bit thinner so just really uh watching the weather and the ice and just itself uh throughout the whole winter depending on where you are and um yeah Thank you. Um, I, I got a, I got one here. So, what are some of the, um, some of the challenges of staying safe on the water? I'll ask you, Charlie. Um, I know, like for example, in my community, we have a, the the Great Bear River. The mouth is really close to the community, and it's all open, so the ice freezes over, and once it gets to the river, it opens up, and you can't get too close to it but uh, you know there's certain skidoo trails that you follow and and those that's some of the challenges um, charlie what are what are some of the challenges um staying safe on the ice in your community well like this uh, this time of year to us we well we got a trail you know like a as soon as a duck leg is open we go around we go we out in, inside land you know go go through portage, portage and that's how far we, we go to uh, Obey, and sometimes we keep going and we go all the way to Moose Bay and drive on this this uh, trail. As our our answer to they made they made a trail there. We just follow that same trail, you know, go hunting lad and like uh, for like the trail there. But for safety, like uh, you always carry a, a knife and a rope, or just you know, just in case you fell in, you always uh, knife is. Just, carry just when you get stuck here or me you keep falling water you got pull yourself out of because uh this time of year the ice uh, breaks and it's smooth it's hard to grab you know to get a hold you get to get out of the uh, water so it's better to have a plus plus i always bring uh, extra uh, socks and pants like you know extra socks and you know, just just to you know you fall in water you change your 
shoes and have a mattress and everything with you all the time. Like I put the mattress in the safety uh, plastic bag in that just for you know keep yourself. You yeah. Any, you know, get, you know, make fire everything. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So plus you ask your you ask your friend where you're going if that or maybe two guys go together all the time just one fellow and one go help each another out that's yeah like, that's our yeah. travel all the time, just for two person all the time let's see all right last last question um all of you can answer this um if you want so the the question is it's from Tyra Moses. It's uh, do you? I guess um, yeah. I guess anyone can answer this one. So, do you remember any legends or any old stories that may correspond to ice safety? Well, because uh, we we learn from our parents, and then we're just like. This time of year, everybody needs to go out trapping and everything. That. So, when, you know, which, uh, which leg is good to travel, which is not, you know, which leg is not to go on, go, go to? Like, like this time of year, when it's ice, like open water, yeah, it's still, open, it's still frozen, but people just go up up for trapping and everything. They, they follow, the, they make their own trail, you know, make you follow the same, like a uh, dog team trail. They go to one lake, you know. They know what lake is not frozen. They stay there and they make a camp and they wait, wait for a couple of days and they keep going. Because on this side, there's lots of big, uh, big lakes. Uh. So that's yeah. uh, we learn from uh, our, our our parents and uh, our grandfather. Even they told a story where, where to travel. Where you know where that's how I learned from from my parents. So you're still using their ancestors' uh, dog sledding trails for yeah. To yeah. Yeah, we still use the same trail, but all well, these excuses we got to make it extra work, yeah. make it wider. <laughs> not, yeah. Not like before. yeah, so. Awesome. Yeah. Matea or Noel, you got any old old stories that you heard about ice safety or anything like that? Uh, not so much any legends. It's just like kind of like what Charlie was saying. It's just like all this knowledge has been passed down from like previous generations to to us today. Yeah. How about uh, this quick one? Do you guys see anything on ice safety in your community? Like whether that's at the Northern store on the bulletin board or maybe at the office or in the schools? Um, do you guys hear about it at all or is all your ice safety knowledge um, just kind of passed down to you? Like where would someone, someone who moved here uh, they want to know more about it. Where, where can they get it? Do they have to go find an elder and learn stories, or can they um, go see a, a poster or get some? How would they get knowledge? And do you guys see any in your communities? I think Facebook oh, awesome. is a really big resource. Uh, perfect. It's a very valuable resource when it comes to like newcomers within communities. Um, I, I bet that's probably one of the best places to look in a new vic charlie you got facebook <laughs> <laughs> no i don't have facebook <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a smoke message <laughs> <laughs> smoke signals huh no that's why for me we, we, uh, we go to the call the city city website they, they tell you where's all the ice how, how thick it is around here so just yeah. people, the newcomers, they go go to a city, uh, city hall or fire department. They look into it. They find where's all the around the Yellowknife area, just because Yellowknife got lots of skidoos and people, you know, they find out. Or oh, they got a great safe lake, uh, uh, skidoo. Uh, they, they got that can uh, help you. So they probably go to their uh, website. You might find find the half thick of the ice around here. So yeah. Yeah, it's a good spot. Yeah. Check on check out that website if you want to know the ice thickness. I know. Yeah, for my for myself, uh, like just growing up, we didn't really see any posts or anything like that uh, up here in Tuck. But 
uh, a lot of the families knew exactly whose kids is whose. So like actually uh, really, and also like we always, um, every family like actually like either scolded or taught lessons to, to the, those children that are around there, whether that be like trying to run across the ice or something like that, whether that be a puddle or on a little, little stream or something like that. And just like uh, people are just looking out for each other uh, as well. And just like actually reminding people that ice is thin and stuff like that so that nothing, nothing bad does happen to, in their community. Yeah, that's the beauty of small communities. Everyone knows each other and helps out. Um, we have a one more question. It's from, uh, this one's from Kalina Newmark. Um, she would like to hear uh, more about who is your role model and one thing that they taught you about the old ways. So who's your role model and tell us one thing that they taught you about the old ways something that stuck with you how about this let's go with you no uh my role model is definitely uh my like grandfather just because of everything that he has taught me uh all the way from traveling throughout uh, all the seasons to really noticing the like the little things of like where animals are or where they're going and stuff like that so just like just my grandfather has taught me everything uh, that I know today about traveling hunting fishing and uh, yeah I mean like it's been really amazing to learn from him and I definitely tried to spend as much time as I can with him before he had passed to really gather all the knowledge that he had and just continue to hear stories of when he grew up up here. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I wish I had that opportunity, but when I was young when my grandpa passed and he was a, he was a very knowledgeable person with the indigenous ways and I, I wish I could have learned more from him. Um, Matea? Mm -hmm. Um, I have a lot of role models, so it's kind of hard to pick one, but I think that like everyone in my life, I look up to like all the elders and adults in my life who are passing these traditions and um, ways of life down to me um, are my role models. Um, I, I, I learn stuff from like adults and my grandma every day in my life. Um, so I think something Megan, about like we learn a lot of knowledge and you got to take in so much and yeah it's uh it's exciting and I I'd love to get the magazine and read it and and learn some things yeah I the, it's kind of hard to get them but um I'll figure out a way <laughs> yeah please, I think that's it. please send me one <laughs> all right Charlie Oh yeah, learn from all uh, from uh, my dad and then my dad told me go out with uh, different people like my uncles and, and my friends. Lad, he said you learn from them, man. He said you, you don't learn from well. I learned from my dad too, but they, he told me every every everybody does a uh, different different ways to do things. So that's why I learned from different from my uncles and to my other uncles. They they teach me different different way they they learn they, them too they learn from their parents I mean, their fathers and grandpa father they learn different ways so that's how I learn from from those guys so that's how I, I learn from from different different way my dad my dad teach me too and they go go with other people you might, you learn from them too it's, it's not only him it's, it's him do him him too he does a different way so that's how I learn from lots from different way, different way from you travel, you travel with different people and that's where you learn from not only yeah. the same people, but you learn from different different guys, different how they hunt the air from it. Good Charlie, what's one Charlie, what's one thing um that you were taught but taught a different way, but they both work. You know what I mean? Oh uh, uh, safety by ice is you check the ice all the time, you see before you go on, on the ice travel and you check the ice and 
one thing is, is you carry carrying a knife with you all the time. He said, when you travel this time of year, and then you, you know, check the ice and before you go in place, you know, you and check the weather too and we see if it's that cloudy days and some are colder, you know, clear sky, the clear sky is good, the air is cold to travel. Is it? So when there's cloudy days, you make sure the ice is thick, you know, lots of snow, lots of snow, it means that uh, ice not not safe at some time, some places. Yeah. That's what Noah was saying, it insulates the ice and yeah. warms it up. Yeah, it goes from under under the ice, it melts from under the ice. All right, so I think uh, that's it for questions, guys. We're gonna move on to um, our spin the wheel winners. So we're gonna spin the wheel. Uh, we're gonna announce two winners. Um, I'm not sure what prize they're gonna get, but I'm sure it's it's pretty cool from the RPA. All right. You guys see this wheel? Holly, Holly is the winner. The first winner. And our second winner is Jeffrey. All right, Holly and Jeffrey. Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, you guys, I don't know what they win, but hopefully it's pretty cool. All right. Well, oh, someone's talking. A float suit, Carson. Sorry, what's that? A oh, float, float suit. suit. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Lucky them. Yeah, congratulations, float suits. Um, all right. Well, that's a wrap. Um, on behalf of the NWTRPA and MRA, I'd like to thank uh, Noel, Matea, and Charlie for attending this session and sharing your knowledge. Thank you all to who uh, actually stayed and listened for us for an hour. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun talking to you guys, and uh, I certainly learned a lot, and it, it makes me more um, intrigued on learning more. Um, I want to get to know more. I'm going home this Christmas and I'm, I'm so excited to to go on the land and, and be with my family and learn and learn the ways. Um, yeah, so uh, that's that's everything. This thing's going to be recorded. So if you guys want to watch it, check out the YouTube channel and uh, anything else you guys want to say before we sign off. Oh, stay safe out there. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Carson, and uh, both organizations and putting putting this on to actually get this get these stories out there because I think a lot of people can learn so much from just listening to to all three of us talk about this. Nice. Matea, any last words? Uh, I second Noel. <laughs> <laughs> all right um holly and jeffrey um the rpa mra they're gonna email you and send you and mail you your float suit so that's awesome and uh, if you guys need any more resources on ice safety check out the rpa um follow up with uh, rachel or jess they'll they'll send you some some water safety resources or ice safety. Uh, I keep saying water because I was we did the water the first time and now we're on to ice. <laughs> but um, but yeah, thank you all for for joining and uh, we'll see you next time.